he's going to have to keep that number down to make sure his team gets a great opportunity each time down the floor. And Roy Williams has been very adamant about the fact that he does not want that to happen. So, again, this is not just another game for Roy Williams. And he's hoping that his team reflects that in their energy and had two turnovers to start off the Wake Forest game. However, honed it down, only had three for the entire game. 11 field goals and put a tremendous amount of pressure on this dominant front line for the North Carolina Tar Heels. We see Garrison Bush get an easy basket. Drive to the bucket, Thomas Allen. Kerwin Walton off the mark on his first shot. Braxton Beverly quickly up ahead. Allen lays it in. The way that North Carolina runs offensively, you would imagine that they should never have a problem getting back on defense because they practice it so much. For North Carolina ever if they keep the 17.9 pace at all. Paycott with the left hand. It has a lot more to do with trying to keep North Carolina off of that offensive glass. Kevin Keats said himself, their best offense is once they miss a shot. As NC State now only has 10 seconds to try to get a quality look. Tough runner by Daniels. And one of the things that really isn't talked about as much, when you hear, you know, everyone talks about North Carolina and their freshman, and De'Ron Sharp, of course, right on cue, you should be talking about veterans to go along with it, but... Still some growing pains for the Wolfpack. Turning defense into offense. Boy, I tell you what, as Caleb Love now has six points. About to the last one, you know, everybody only talks about your, your last game's the only one that matters, and it was the Wolfpack coming up with a big win on their home court on December 22nd. Daniels with a nice turnaround. And Caleb Love playing together before Playtech came in, and that's something that hasn't happened much, but I watched these four guys go at it over in Winston-Salem at the CP3 Elite Point Guard Academy as Thunderbird is able to finish up. When you, when you think about these two teams and these freshman point guards going at it, hopefully this is something we can see moving forward for a while. At 11.6 points per game, Corey, he leads Carolina in scoring, and not since the 1946-47 season. The UNC team had its leading score under 12 points per game. Well, under 12 points per game because UNC not scoring nearly what they're used to, but Armando Baycott getting off to a great start in this one after the NC State loss. And he took that game personally, and he's come out showing that it's personal for him trying to get a win today. Devin Daniels ties the game at 18. Sharp, maybe the best passer on this Carolina team, feeds the post. It comes to Baycott, and just like that, Corey, he's got double figures. He stayed going back to just the one big with Bates on the floor, Thunderbird checking out. It's going to be difficult to try to defend North Carolina in the painted area, but Devin Daniels knocking down another mid-range jumper. See if they go to Baycott again, Pat posting up Bates. Instead, Sharp connects from 16 feet. That's, that's not Davis. something I ever heard from a coach, by the way, Doug. No, I, I don't imagine, <laughs> including Coach Williams. Walker Kessler in the game and on the score sheet. Got Garrison Brooks, Davon Sharp, Walker Kessler. They are going to have a size advantage at most times on the glass, and they're turning into normally about 18 second-chance points per game. And yeah, Wolfpack picking it up from the floor. Now six of its last eight. Two-point ball game, just over eight minutes remaining in the half. Caleb Love finds some space and buries the pull-up. Right now both those guys on the floor alongside Anthony Harris, who's just returning in the Florida State game. Daniels Great turns the corner again. That one, North Carolina concern, it may have been on the rim. Love finds Harris, and he connects. So another opportunity to take on a ranked opponent. But, you know, one thing that's hurting the ACC is the fact that Duke will get in as well. So, <laughs> Well, Jalen Johnson it looks like he's getting back to it, you know? And he's not taking enough shots? That's a problem. <laughs> I'm sure you'll talk to him about it. Oh, I already have. Not two step up for NC State, because he's the one guy that can compete on the back bench. We'll see you on the Jeep Halftime Report in a bit. Dayron Sharp. 
Alonzo L is talking about Armando Bacot's performance thus far, thus far in the first half. And of course, Fonz is always cheering on the bigs as Dayron Sharp gives Fonz a little more to cheer about. North Carolina shooting 54.5% from the field right now. NC State is allowing opponents in ACC play to shoot over 50%. But he is the third fastest player to 100 block shots as far as games. I am surprised at you, Dougie Fresh. Well, one is simple. I mean, one is pretty easy. I mean, if you think ACC shot blocks over the last 30 years, you got to think Tim Duncan. Let's start there. The shot block leaders in ACC history. And, you know, Manny's on pace to wind up alongside Thurl Bailey and B.J. Anya as the greatest shot blockers in program history. Devin Daniels with a basketball. He leads NC State with 11 points. Nice pick and roll to Funderburk to get him going. The offensive end, but also they're going to have to trust him defensively to keep Baycott and Sharp off the glass. And just like that, another turnover that turns into a bucket for NC State to start this second half. Walton forces his way to the bucket and banks it in. NC State's going to double team, then somebody's going to get an open one, but that was a mismatch that North Carolina missed out on. Love gets the roll. 47-37, the lead back to 10. Especially with younger players and younger guards, because there's so much responsibility put on those guys, but Devin Daniels, who is a fifth-year senior, knocks down a big three after two back-to-back -back passes from North Carolina. Baycott, two more for the big man it. from Richmond. Great setup by Daniels. Now the takeaway by Beverly. He's got his second layup of the second half. And a nice interception right there by Beverly. Raleigh, they forced the Tar Heels into 18 turnovers. Uh, but maybe Caleb Love and R.J. Davis were more apt to turn it over a month ago than they are now. And needed opportunities, you know, for before I did. And again, that was a, a learning curve for me. But yet, it helped me become a better basketball player. And it, it also helped the fact that Brian Stiff was so good. Back to 10 for Carolina. Daniels has it knocked away. It goes right to Thunderbird who lays it in. But what has happened, Doug, you've seen Kevin Keats have to go get both of his big guys in the game as they share the basketball well, but Mondo Baycott coming up with a huge block. Bates had five block shots in the first matchup between Mondo on some get back. And you know, Mama call him Mondo. I'm going to call him Mondo. <laughs> We're pressing and hunting for shots, which they don't seem to do that much anymore. Well, R.J. Davis is a knockdown shooter. I mean, he, he's a scorer, so he's always going to look for his shot. So, unfortunately, we've lost yet another baseball Hall of Famer. But uh, Hammer and Hank is somebody who can you can certainly look up to regardless of the sport, right, Corey? A chance to chat with him one-on-one -on -one for a few minutes. And, and like you've seen everybody say the last two days, there's not a classier man. I had no idea that Craig Sager was the reporter that met him <laughs> at, at home plate. Like, it's his team, and then all of a sudden it's Craig Sager. Why is Sager right there? Yeah, and so when you see that the next time, look for the, the radio reporter in the tan trench coat. That's Craig Sager. No flashy jackets back then. The rebound. Here come the Tar Heels. Manny Bates with another block shot. <laughs> I tell you what, you have to know where he is at all times because there are very few shots that you're going to get. <laughs> it, yep. was, it was that bad. He blocked every shot. On the reverse, another layup for Anthony Harris, who's been quite a spark off the bench this afternoon. Definitely dominant in that area, as well as scoring points in the paint. Caleb Love end-to-end -end for two more. Level of confidence early in the season was discouraging, but I like the fact that he's continued to stay at work. as well documented how much extra work he's putting in. You can see his confidence growing, you know, by each and every game. That time, though, blocked by Bates, the help defender. Least I can do is take my time and make it legible. Why are you telling me that now? I mean, I've been signing autographs for the last, you know, 40 years since I was seven. <laughs> How come I don't have one of your autographs? They, no, no, no. I, I don't give autographs to family. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> You're family. They have knocked out Virginia Tech from the rankings come Monday. Virginia Tech ranked number 16 this week. But they did not have a game earlier in the week and losing at Syracuse. And we'll see. Will Florida State be ranked? 
next week in Clemson. I'm not sure if they'll win. If they win, they may be able to get back into the rankings. But competition amongst this team as far as who wins the defensive player of the year game, player of the game, after every game, he wants them to battle and compete for that. He used to do what he does against UNC, which is knock down three. Walton tries to answer and does. Back to a nine-point game. NC State at bay just a bit simply because you can feel some momentum, some momentum building up for the Wolfpack is another momentum shot. Carolina up eight, under three minutes remaining. Step back three for Love is an air ball, but there to clean it up. And a Derek Wittenberg assist for Caleb Love. The putback by Funderburg. When you watch North down to seven. You were saying, Corey? Well, if you've watched a lot of North Carolina basketball this year, you've noticed that the two freshman point guards were not playing well. You had to have one of them on the floor, but definitely not both of them. But coming down the stretch here tonight, you have both of those guys on the floor as Funderburg continues. Traction Beverly. In amongst the trees, dumps it off, and Bates throws it down. And they will knock off their... Rivals from Raleigh, 86-76, to earn a split of the regular season series.